In the world of military aviation, some aircraft earn a reputation not just for their power, but for their thunderous roars that can be heard from miles away. Today, we're diving into the history of one such aircraft, the Republic XF-84H Thunder Screech. This experimental turboprop aircraft, born from the F-84F Thunderstreak, aimed to set the airspeed record for propeller-driven planes. But its journey was anything but smooth, marred by aerodynamic challenges and engine troubles. But before we go any further, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel. The XF-84H story begins with an ambitious vision. Originally conceived as the XF-106, it was intended to serve as a carrier fighter without the need for catapult assistance. However, when the US Navy withdrew its order, the project was reborn as the XF-84H, firmly tying it to the F-84 family and focusing its purpose on testing supersonic propellers. To create this unique aircraft, a F-84F Thunderstreak airframe underwent extensive modifications. The heart of the XF-84H was its impressive 5,050 horsepower XT-40A1 turboprop engine positioned centrally behind the cockpit with a lengthy shaft extending to the nose-mounted propeller. This powerful turbine engine also doubled as a source of thrust through its exhaust. Interestingly, an afterburner capable of boosting power to a staggering 7,230 horsepower was installed but remained unused. The XF-84H's propulsion was managed by a massive 12-foot diameter Aeroproducts propeller. This propeller, comprised of three sturdy, square-tipped blades, spun at a constant speed with their tips reaching a mind-boggling Mach 1.18, or around 1,146 kilometers per hour. To counteract the torque generated by the propeller, the aircraft featured a fixed dorsal yaw vane. To further enhance stability, the tail configuration was changed to a T-tail, a design aimed at avoiding turbulent airflow over the horizontal stabilizer and elevator surfaces caused by the propeller's wash. However, the XF-84H faced several daunting challenges. The immense torque produced by the propeller made the aircraft inherently unstable. Supersonic propeller blades were an entirely new territory, and numerous blade. Designs were experimented with before a suitable one was found. To address the torque issue, several clever design features were incorporated. The left leading edge intake was positioned 12 inches further forward than the right one, and the left and right flaps were equipped with differential operation. Notably, the XF-84H was the first aircraft to be equipped with a retractable extendable ram, air turbine. In case of an engine failure, this ingenious device would swing out into the airstream, providing crucial hydraulic and electrical power. Due to the frequent engine problems plaguing the XF-84H, this backup system was often deployed during flight as a precaution. The XF-84H, a remarkable feat of engineering, boasted impressive specifications and outstanding performance capabilities. With a crew capacity of one, it measured 51 feet 5 inches in length, had a wingspan of 33 feet 5 inches, stood at a height of 15 feet 4 inches, and featured a wing area of 331.0 square feet. Despite its substantial size, the aircraft had an empty weight of 7,892 pounds, which increased to 27,046 pounds when fully loaded. In terms of performance, the XF-84H excelled with a maximum speed of 520 femurs, an impressive range of 2,000 miles, a service ceiling of 40,000 feet, a jaw-dropping rate of climb at 5,000 feet per minute, 25 meters per second, and a noteworthy thrust-weight ratio of 0.66. This aircraft was not only known for its noise, but also for its raw power and exceptional performance capabilities. But the XF-84H's journey began at Republic's Long Island plant, where it was meticulously crafted. Once assembled, it was disassembled and shipped by rail to Edwards Air Force Base for rigorous flight testing. On July 22, 1955, this beast of an aircraft took to the skies for the first time, showcasing incredible acceleration. However, 
It didn't take long for the XF-84H's impracticalities to surface. Its combat potential was severely limited due to the engine's whopping 30-minute warm-up time, rendering it unsuitable for rapid response missions. But the most significant challenges were yet to come. The aircraft's gigantic 12-foot diameter propeller was a marvel of engineering but also a source of extreme trouble. The vibration generated by this colossal propeller was enough to make even the bravest pilots think twice. One of Republic's test pilots, Lynn Hendricks, had the honor of flying the XF-84H once, but refused to do it again. He claimed that the aircraft never exceeded 450 knots, around 830 kilometers per hour, indicated airspeed because it exhibited an unsettling behavior known as snaking, a loss of longitudinal stability. Hendricks even had a memorable exchange with the formidable Republic project engineer, telling him, you aren't big enough, and there aren't enough of you to get me in that thing again. Unfortunately, Hendricks's experience was not unique. Other test flights were plagued by engine failures, hydraulic problems, nose gear issues, and relentless vibration troubles. Test pilot Hank Beard took the XF-84H into the skies 11 times, with a staggering 10 of those flights ending in forced landings. It was a testament to the aircraft's inherent challenges. Now let's get to the heart of what made the XF-84H truly unique. It's ear-splitting noise. This aircraft earned the nickname Thunder Screech, and for good reason. In fact, it's almost certainly the loudest aircraft ever built, and it was also lovingly referred to as the Mighty Ear Banger. On the ground during engine run-ups, the XF-84H's prototypes could be heard from an astonishing 25 miles, 40 kilometers away. But what made it truly exceptional was its propeller. Unlike standard propellers that turn at subsonic speeds, the outer 24 to 30 inches of the XF-84H's propeller blades traveled faster than the speed of sound, even at idle thrust. This created a continuous visible sonic boom that radiated outwards from the propellers for hundreds of yards. The shockwave generated by this sonic boom was powerful enough to knock a person down. In one unfortunate incident, a crew chief inside a nearby C-47 aircraft was severely incapacitated during a 30-minute ground run. The combined noise from the supersonic propeller, the T-40's dual turbine sections, and the subsonic aspects of the propeller were enough to induce a severa nausea and head a cheese among ground crews. The pervasive noise also wreaked havoc on operations in the Edwards AFB control tower. It risked vibration damage to sensitive components, forcing air traffic personnel to communicate with the XF-84H crew using light signals. After numerous complaints, the Air Force Flight Test Center had Republic tow the aircraft out to Rogers Dry Lake, far from the flight line, before running its engine. With all these challenges, the XF-84H test program never progressed beyond Phase 1 proving flights. No USAF test pilots ever flew the XF-84H. Ultimately, the program was cancelled in September 1956 as the insurmountable problems engine failures and instability at design speeds made it clear that the thunder screech was more a formidable noise machine than a practical military jet. The XF-84H was recorded in the Guinness Book of Records as the fastest propeller-driven aircraft ever built. With a design top speed of 670 MUP and a test speed of 623 MUP, this aircraft certainly raised eyebrows. However, this claim has faced its fair share of disputes. Data from the National Museum of the United States Air Force paints a different picture, giving the XF-84H a top speed of 520 km, 840 km h. Regardless of the controversy, it remained the fastest single-engine propeller-driven aircraft until 1989 when Rare Bear, a highly modified Grumman F-8F Bearcat, reached 528 m. The fate of these incredible XF-84H machines took different paths. Two prototypes, FS-059 and FS-060, were built. FS-059 eventually found its way to the National Museum of the United States Air Force in Ohio after an adventurous retirement, while FS-060 had a shorter career, completing only four flights before likely meeting its end in a scrapyard. However, its T-40 engine lived on, 
supporting the Douglas A2D Sky Shark flight test program.